So yeah, looks like scientists discovered even more unusual supernova nobody knew existed or could even be possible. How wonderful person, this is Anton. And today we're going to be discussing two such discoveries about two potentially new phenomena at the moment impossible to explain. With both of these unusual phenomena discovered just weeks apart from two completely different types of stars and completely different parts of the universe. Let's start with the first one. This first one is an unusual type of an explosion that we actually cannot explain at all. It seems to be a supernova, but it could be something entirely different as well. So basically here, the explosion was extremely bright and it suddenly brightened very very quickly, yet unlike a typical supernova, then dimmed really quickly as well, disappearing into nothingness. Now normally, in a, for example, type 2 supernova, you'll have a star collapsing, exploding, brightening for a couple of weeks, reaching the peak of brightness after maybe 14 days, and then slowly dimming over time. If you like graphs, here's roughly what the graph looks like for a typical type 2 supernova. And this can actually last for a few months. As a matter of fact, one of the recent supernova that was detected not so long ago, in one of the nearby galaxies, about which you can learn in the video in the description, was visible inside the Pinwell galaxy for many months afterwards. And so this is usually what we expect from a regular explosion. And generally, most of the curves we observe are usually very similar. And this is independent of if it's type 1 supernova or type 2. With most of these supernova reaching their peak after approximately 20 days. This is of course on average. And they usually become at least several billion times brighter than the sun. But they obviously dim with time and usually disappear completely after one year. And pretty much every single year, hundreds of different supernova are discovered across the universe, with most obviously being very very far away from us. There hasn't been a single supernova in the Milky Way galaxy for quite some time. And now we have this unusual new event you see right here. Within just 10 days, it became ultra bright, approximately 100 billion solar luminosities. Much much brighter than a typical supernova. But then, within approximately 15 days, it faded almost completely. It was only about 1% as bright. And so because it became so bright and actually reached this brightness so quickly and then dimmed so quickly as well, scientists are now proposing this to be a new type of a phenomenon. Luminous Fast Coolers, LFCs. Potentially a new type of an explosion we've never seen before, representing some kind of a super destructive event that seems to be brighter and more powerful than a typical supernova. But also maybe not being a supernova at all. Mostly because of its location and because of a lot of other observations. For example, first it was discovered in a galaxy that you can sort of see right there, that mostly contains extremely sun-like stars that are not really massive enough to produce a supernova. You need to have a star of at least 8 solar masses for any of this to happen. Now it could be a type 1 supernova involving a white dwarf, but it doesn't really match these types of explosions either. And more importantly, it happened in a massive red galaxy, or basically elliptical galaxy with a lot of old stars, and very far from the center as you can see right here. We don't really expect to have any large stars in this region of an elliptical galaxy, and even comparing this to other famous explosions, nothing here seems to match. Now it's not the brightest explosion out there, there are some even brighter ones, but it's definitely in the league of its own. And definitely fades much quicker than anything else. But even more importantly, when they look at the older archives, they discover two more such explosions, one detected in 2009 and one in 2020 that were just missed by previous studies, with scientists assuming these were supernova as well. These were also in similar galaxies and in strange locations. And because three such events now have been discovered, scientists behind the study assume that this is some kind of a new phenomenon that we need to understand and try to figure out. Not maybe a supernova, but something maybe involving maybe a black hole, maybe something else. For example, one assumption was that maybe this is a result of two stars colliding and essentially exploding as a result. Now that's possible, but it shouldn't be that bright. Another explanation involved a black hole. Now this cannot be a supermassive black hole, because once again this is happening on the outskirts of the galaxy, so we don't expect these objects to exist here, but it could be a smaller intermediate mass black hole that maybe swallowed a star. 
We've actually seen such event a few years ago. A video in the description talks a little bit more about this. But in this case, this is known as the tidal disruption event, and we expect to see X-rays, or some kind of a higher radiation. Nothing like that was discovered here either. And so maybe this was a black hole collision or some kind of a black hole shredding, because usually this happens really fast and does involve a lot of brightness, but done in a different way where X-rays are just not produced. So yeah, at the moment nobody knows what's happening here, or what's creating these unusual events in galaxies where these should not happen. Now this event is now officially known as Atom because of the random assignment of letters when it was originally discovered, and so Atom is now a new type of an event. At least for now, we're going to be calling them LFCs, Luminous Fast Coolers. But they'll probably become a little bit more easier to understand once we find even more of them using other surveys, especially if one of them can be found much closer to Earth. The ones in this study are really, really far away, millions of light years away from planet Earth. But apart from Atom, or apart from these LFCs, there was another unusual discovery from much closer to home. And this time, it was an observation that was detected almost right away from a small dwarf galaxy that you see right here. But in this case, it appeared to be a type 1 supernova, meaning that this is a supernova involving a white dwarf that acquires enough mass by stealing this mass from its partner. And once it crosses what's known as Chandrasekhar limit, or basically once it becomes approximately 1.4 solar masses in mass, it explodes because at this point it reached its limit. All type 1a supernova seem to happen the same way, at least for the most part. But the examination by two separate teams that released two separate studies revealed something really strange here. And interestingly, both of these papers came out on the same day pretty much about the same object and discovered the same thing. So here's what they found. They now believe this is a supernova that possibly detonated twice, a double supernova. And specifically, it was a strange type 1a supernova that did not involve Chandrasekhar limit. Or in other words, unlike previous supernova with white dwarfs where they explode because of the mass limit, in this particular case, something else caused the supernova to happen and the white dwarf was not at its limit. So basically, it was a very unusual, very peculiar supernova that has never been seen before and surprised a lot of scientists. But there is now a really good explanation. Despite the distances involved here, and despite the fact that this is a dwarf galaxy, this double detonation provided enough information from different elements in this explosion for the researchers to make specific conclusions about what they think happened here. And unlike the previous LFC supernova, this one was actually much dimmer than usual. It was what's known as subluminous supernova. And so one of the telltale signs here to try to explain this was an unusual observation of a sudden explosion of red light that happened 11 days before the major explosion. But even though that red explosion did appear kind of unusual, the second explosion resembled a typical type 1a supernova. So in other words, we have this unusual double peak. And the main explanation here involves what actually happens around these star systems as the white dwarfs accumulate all of the mass around them by stealing it from their partner. And so here usually the white dwarf starts to acquire a kind of an atmosphere on top of it as it basically steals the mass from the partner star. Now in most systems when this happens, this is usually hydrogen and occasionally it reaches the limit where it detonates forming what's known as nova. These are actually super common and they happen everywhere including the Milky Way galaxy with many of them happening every few years. We usually refer to these stars as cataclysmic variables. But in certain binary systems, if the partner star is different, you'll actually have different elements on the surface. And so it's now believed that this star was probably filled with helium. And so the white dwarf started to deposit a lot of helium on its surface, forming a huge helium shell instead of typical hydrogen. And once that helium shell was formed, it once again reaches a certain limit, triggering what's known as helium detonation. This happens because there's just so much helium on the surface and it's so highly pressurized and so hot that it starts its own nuclear reaction all at once. And this powerful helium detonation always forms what's known as nickel-56, which was actually observed coming from this particular star system. So this was a telltale sign that helium exploded here, at least in the beginning. This is probably what produced that red emission 11 days prior to the main explosion. 
But this explosion of helium doesn't just produce nickel, it also creates a shockwave going inside the white dwarf. And it's quite likely that it's that shockwave that suddenly triggered the second detonation inside the star, basically ripping apart the white dwarf, initiating type 1a supernova, even though the mass limit was not yet reached. And so it was that helium detonation that produced nickel, that then also caused the star to suddenly explode, disappearing in the process. With the analysis now suggesting that the white dwarf was probably about one solar mass in total, and the helium shell was approximately 2% of the solar mass, explaining the overall observations and overall emissions seen in the supernova, making this one of the more unique, one of the stranger supernova we've seen in the last few years. Although here it would be interesting to see what other elements this might have produced, because today we do believe type 1a supernova usually produce huge amounts of different heavy elements and are responsible for enriching galaxies, helping them evolve over time. But at least for now, this is the first such event discovered in the last few years. It will be interesting to see how common this is and what sort of a partner star results in these double detonations. Also, since we often use type 1a supernova as a kind of a measuring candle to measure distances in a lot of different galaxies, it sort of presents us with a bit of a problem. The luminosity here was different from what was expected, and so some of the other observations using type 1a supernova might need to be aware of this just for future reference. But we'll actually talk more about these measurement problems with distances in some of the future videos on what's known as Hubble tension. On that note, thank you for watching, share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.